Today, we finally have the release of the Hasselblad 90V, as well as a brand new firmware update for the X2D, which brings us some very welcome new features. Welcome back, everyone. You might remember about a year ago when the X2D was introduced. I did a video on that, and they introduced a trio of lenses, the 38V, the 55V, as well as the 90V. Well, there have been some production delays, and a year later, we finally have the 90V. I'm really glad personally that Hasselblad took the time to get this right because I'm gonna go out on a bold statement here. I've been using this lens for the last few weeks. I think this is the best lens that Hasselblad have made to date. But before we get to the lens, I do want to talk about the new firmware update and what we now have with the X2D. So first off, we now have face detection autofocus, which is really timely as the 90V is a great portrait focal length. So the way that it works in the menu system, we now have an icon for face detect. So if we're in autofocus, I can select that. We can turn it off or we can select between manual and auto face detection modes. When you frame up your subject, you're going to see a green box box around their face. This enables face detection autofocus. In my experience, it has actually worked particularly well. Even though it's not an IAF per se, I am getting the eyes in focus with the face detection. So kudos to Hasselblad. This is actually a feature that we've been wanting for a long time. Also new in this firmware, there has been some changes in the crop mode. So if you've ever shot on the X2D, Crop modes are a really cool thing that you can use on here, most notably the X-Pan mode, where you can get the extreme horizontal, or if you tilt the camera, you can get an extreme vertical. This is something that I really like. I also like the three by two modes, and for whatever reason, the last version of this firmware actually had those taken out unless you were using a third-party lens. Well, Hasselblad has added it back in now, and there also is a crop mode for three by two. The cool thing about this is it allows you to do a couple things. So first of all, you can shoot the lens exactly as it would be on a 35 five millimeter sensor. Now, obviously there's going to be a crop, and if you shoot in raw, bring that into your computer. It's just metadata, so you can recrop it and reframe it if you want. But what I really like about that is it gives me the exact focal length that I would be used to on a 35 millimeter system. So a 90 millimeter lens is a 90 millimeter lens, so on and so forth. And the really cool thing about that is that I've got a lot of flexibility there, and I get essentially two modes for every prime lens that I want to use. So I can shoot it at the medium format focal length, or I could shoot it at 35 millimeter focal length. Obviously there's cropping involved, but even with cropping, it's still a 68 megapixel file. So it's very usable, very large, and very awesome. And also new is an HEIF file format, which is going to support up to 10-bit color. And there's also a new CMOS bad pixel calibration function, which is available for all three formats, RAW, JPEG, and HEIC. When you go into the settings, you're going to find it in there where you can actually calibrate the sensor for dead pixels, which is really cool. So let's talk about the 90V and why this is one of my favorite lenses, Hasselblad is produced for the XCD mount. So I've been shooting on this lens for about a month now. It's everything that I hoped it would be, honestly. Focal length is excellent for portraits and the size and weight are very well managed. This is not an easy feat to achieve. When you're dealing with medium format, you're dealing with a larger sensor. Therefore, you must have a larger image circle to cover that sensor. So therefore, you must have a larger lenses. So this is not an easy thing for Hasselblad to accomplish. They've established this whole system around a mirrorless camera that's really small, really compact, super portable, super lightweight. And the difficulty here is that we are dealing with a much larger sensor. So it's really difficult to design lenses for this system, especially really wide apertures, without some give and take in terms of size and weight. Personally, I find this lens to be a massive upgrade to the older 80 millimeter f1.9. This was my favorite lens until recently. When it came out, we finally got a shallow depth of field and the contrast was so controlled and it was probably one of the closest subject isolation looks that you would see on the older medium format cameras that Hasselblad is known for. The 80 for me was a watershed lens for Hasselblad. However, the 80 is very large, it's quite heavy, the autofocus motors are audibly more noticeable, and requires a lot of practice to use effectively. I can use it and I can actually shoot moving subjects with it. It's just something you're gonna have to practice and get used to. The 90 millimeter, on the other hand, is a slightly longer focal length, so the depth of field is actually very similar between the 2.5 to that f1.9. The optics are both sharper with better transitions to the autofocus areas. It's lighter, it has faster autofocus, and it gives you more features such as the clutch manual focus. You've got all the technical markings when you go into manual focus using the clutch, and it's all in all a much more matured lens. 
and it's less expensive than the 80 millimeter. Back in 2016, when the XCD system was introduced, the 80 millimeter lens at f1.9 was a lens that people really wanted, but the execution was a little ahead of its time. The V lenses that were introduced last year are a major step in the way that Hasselblad is approaching design. When the 90V was announced, it was the first one that really caught my attention, and we've had to wait a year, but I'm really happy that Hasselblad took the time to get this one right. So the thing is, is that lenses are really critical in any system. They should be built to outlast any body, and I would much rather wait. A year is nothing in a camera's lifetime. This is one lens Hasselblad needed to get perfect, and they did. Another thing that I want to mention are the files that you get off of the X2D, not just on the 90 millimeter, but with any lens that you're using. So the X2D has a 100 megapixel medium format backside illuminated sensor that is capable of 15 stops of light. When you combine that with the processing, Hasselblad's natural color system, you get files that are absolutely gorgeous. And I want to give you an example here. So this is a portrait of my friend Lily, and I brought this in. This is just straight out of the card. So it's a shot in raw. And if you look over the profile that's selected by default, it's going to be camera standard, which is what you want. And you're going to notice that it comes in pretty good. Now, this was shot actually in, it was even light, but it was overcast. And so I'm going to do a couple things to improve on the contrast, but you don't have to do much. And that's what I want to show you with this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to lower my exposure just a little bit to get her skin tones kind of where I want them. And you're going to notice the overall image gets darker. So what I'm going to do is just boost my whites just a little bit get a little more contrast going and it looks really good. One thing that I love about this is like all the microtones that you get in the skin tones and just everything looks really good. So that's one thing I love about the Hasselblad system is it works really good just straight out of camera. Now, another way that I like to edit is just to get a little more of the film look. I like the way that colors looked on slide film or even on C41 film. And so a couple of years ago, I started developing my own presets just so I could make this super quick. So one thing I might wanna do is give this a Provia look, which was a film stock from Fujifilm. It was a great slide film. I have these set up as presets, so over on the left-hand side, all I have to do is click on Fujifilm Provia 100F, and it applies it. Now, here's the really cool thing with working with a camera like the Hasselblad that's got 15 stops of light, is I can rescue highlight and shadow detail. None of that's lost. So if I go over here and I want to edit this image and I want to bring down my highlights, for instance, I can bring those down, nothing's lost, make it a little more even. If I want to bring up my shadow areas, I can do that. If I want more texture in her sweater, so I really don't want that. I want it to be the film look, which is going to be considerably less than 15 stops. But it looks pretty good, and this is an easy way of working. The way that I did these is I started out by doing a bunch of presets based on Fujifilm stocks. And then once I had those, I thought, well, why don't I do Kodak too? So if you like the look of Kodachrome, I've got several different types, depending on which decade of Kodachrome you're talking about. I also have other film stocks like Ektar and Portra. If you want to check them out, I'll drop a link below. But back to the 90V. So the 90V is a modern lens design. I know, Captain Obvious, right? Well, I say that because I am a huge vintage lens nerd, and it's a topic that I cover quite a bit on this channel. It's just my own taste, it's what I like to shoot, and it's a look that I like to go for. I don't like lenses to look too clinical in their rendering. The problem is, is that lenses are made by engineers, so the objective is as close to perfection as the technology, the materials, and the budget will allow for the designer. But the real works of art come from finding a balance, and the 90V is absolutely a work of art. The lens team at Hasselblad put an enormous amount of effort into edge-to-edge -edge sharpness, but at the same time have realized a lens that has exceptional contrast at the point of focus. The lens maintains a sense of depth, you have dimension. The bokeh is extremely beautiful without any color bleeding or blown highlights. One of my favorite aspects of this lens is the soft transitions from what's in focus to what's not. It's a very smooth looking lens. Even at closer distances, when you have the most shallow depth of field, you get a really smooth background that simply accentuates your subject. The lens team at Hasselblad does have a particularly interesting challenge with every design objective that they do, in that every lens that they make must resolve up to 100 megapixels and they've done this really well with the 90V. For me, this actually accentuates the accomplishment as this lens performs up to the expectations of the system, but it also exceeds it by delivering characteristics that make it unique. And Hasselblad did all of this with only nine elements and six groups. This is way less than most modern lens configurations. It's one thing that helps keep the weight down. It helps with the speed of the autofocus. It only uses one aspherical element and one extra low dispersion element. This becomes mathematic, I realize, but as a creative, it works. It's an older school approach to lens design, but with modern glass materials, it's sharp when you need it to be and beautifully out of focus when you need that as well. One of the 
trade-offs with this compact design is going to be vignetting pretty much on any lens, particularly wide-angle lenses. The 90V is pretty well controlled. If you were going to get rid of it entirely, you would have to have a massive circumference on the lens, and it just does not comply with the system. This is something that you could correct in post, but I have found, even with the built-in profiles, that I do like some vignetting, specifically on a portrait lens, so I find myself adding it back in. In terms of distortion, there is just a very slight amount. It's probably not going to be noticeable to some, but again, you can correct that in post-production. This is a really well put together lens, and I love the fact that it just kind of comes with images straight out of the box that look great. It's not a lens that depends on fixing a lot of things in post. The new focusing module on this lens is very fast and it's very quiet, especially if you're used to shooting on the 80 millimeter. I'm really happy to see this. It just works like it says it should. And as I mentioned, the lighter weight of the lens element configuration likely helps here as well, but it's exactly what we've been wanting. Also worth mentioning, all lenses have to accommodate aperture blades in the design, but Hasselblad also have the leaf shutter built in, and this lens gives us a maximum shutter speed of 1 4,000th of a second. That might not sound that impressive, but when you consider that a leaf shutter allows for flash sync at all shutter speeds, it's very impressive, and it opens up a wide variety of creative applications where light needs to be controlled. So this is why the 90V is one of my favorite Hasselblad lenses. It's a great focal length for portraits. Ends up being about a equivalent of a 70 millimeter on a full frame camera, but you can also shoot in a crop mode. So it's a 90 millimeter, 68 megapixel on a full frame camera. There isn't much that I don't like about this lens. And it's something that I really wanted to see Hasselblad come out with. My opinion is the X2D is the best image that you're going to get on any camera that you can buy right now. It has the best dynamic range. It has the best color rendition. There's a lot to love about this camera to see the lenses that are coming out that really highlight and accentuate that is really exciting. So I would love to hear from you and what you guys like to see in a portrait lens. Anything else you'd like me to discuss with the Hasselblad system? I've got some other videos that I've been working on. Now that I've used this whole system here with the X2D for a little over a year now, and I'm really excited about it. So anything you want to hear me talk about, drop me a comment below. I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, later.